I probably have, like, the best channel on YouTube. Definitely, like, the best channel that I know of. Definitely. Like, there's no fucking... There's, I can't think of anyone better than me. I mean, who could possibly be doing it better than me? Because I'm, you know... I'm not I'm talented. I got this. I'm oh, fuck! Oh, what the fuck? Why is it so smoky? Talk about movies! You want me to talk about movies? I said Okay, death. okay, fuck! Welcome back, video creeps! That was a while! Very reminiscent of some dads who leave to go get cigarettes. Alright, I see your trauma. I'm not like your toxic ex-boyfriend. I came back, see? Okay. But while I was gone, I was thinking like, what? What talk can I do me. to give you guys some candy to me. fucking hey. manipulate you into hey, being talk, in love with hey. me again? Hey, talk about me. Talk about me. You should stop what you're talking about. And you, and you should talk about me. Well, I still don't really understand what you are. So I wasn't going to, like, introduce you, bro. No, yeah, totally. Why why address it? Just uh, just one one quick question, though. Don't you think it's a little, just a little bit narcissistic to have a puppet of yourself on, like, your own show? This whole thing is kind of narcissistic, no? Because, like, I write, I edit, I film. I suck my own dick for gratification even by saying that? Sure, go on. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that in doing this, there's a certain level of understanding and acceptance that there's an inherent look at me thing. And honestly, I think that that makes me really fucking self-aware. Jesus Christ. Do you not, like, do you not hear how narcissistic you are? Like when, like when you say that, you really think you're saying something. I think that people at home will understand that and uh, empathize with my creativity. Here's the thing, facts are facts. At the end of the day, your brain decided to live in a world where everyone is just like you. And I can't stress how deeply fucked up that is. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I think that's a bit dramatic. Just cause you're here has no basis on how my inner mind is fucking manifesting shit. As if my inner thoughts are like these characters or something. As if I'm passing the blame on my thoughts off to these fucking other characters and shit. Get real. It's been a while since you had sex, buddy. Jesus Christ! Hello! Are you a penis? No. I'm a, I'm a water balloon. You have balls. <sighs> I'm here to... Not to be a burden. <laughs> I see. What are you supposed to be like? My The representation of my childhood? A reminder to my inner child and its carefree exuberance? No. I'm your depression. Sorry to let you down. Again. Well, I'm not depressed. Super level, man. Secure in my brain, my body, my masculinity. Then why do you need me? I don't, I don't even know what you are. Oh, I'm your warped sense of femininity, honey. Am I in a job because deep down you have a misunderstanding of the female perspective? And so because of the unattainable nature, you can only see me, but you cannot touch me? Okay, okay, okay. Everyone, stop. Don't. Today we're talking about Edward Scissorhands. First and foremost, the whole movie is basically a conspiracy theory i just want to talk about that first the whole thing is told from the perspective of like a most likely senile old woman who's hanging out with a little girl who tells her like hey where does snow come from this is where the conspiracy theory facet comes in for me what's a conspiracy theory anxiety that's a conspiracy against yourself or it could be that this woman believes that vincent price made a man with hands like that are scissors and shit and then that guy makes the fucking ice sculptures and then that's he does it so fast snow man snow well i think it's romantic i think it's asinine it's fucked up and she's you know telling lies to her granddaughter maybe maybe her granddaughter we don't know that could have been any fucking she could have gotten she could have gotten a kid anyway there were barely any toys in that room that kid has not been there for a while Ever wonder why this movie is so strange and weird? It's all from the account of a 70-year-old woman. All the characters in this thing, all the fucking, the everything, it's just her fucking bullshit senile recollection. This is all the memories of a 16-year-old girl 
who is now 70 like years old. That's like a 54 year difference. I, I don't even remember the last time I beat my dick. You what? Exactly. So you're gonna tell me that she remembers everything perfectly or is some shit gonna slip through the cracks? Is she gonna, she gonna fucking, you know, swap some things out she doesn't remember for fucking spaghetti monsters and shit. Ah, ah, I remember, yeah, I did it today. Okay, well, speaking about today, hey, depression, what's uh, what's our letter of the day? The letter of the day is A for abandonment. Just like what happens to everyone in this movie. God, that's true. That's true. Vincent abandons Edward. Kim abandons Jim. And then the whole town abandons Edward. And then Edward abandons Kim. The list goes on and on. It's a pretty, pretty sad story. God, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like my mood is altered. Like, maybe I want to like sing it out. Old lady driving up a hill Finds a man with scissor hands Oh, what a thrill Brings him down, shows him around Cutting all the hair, he's the talk of the town The bully gets mad, the teens get sad Forgettable characters, kinda like the dad Town gets pissed, the miner gets kissed This is the story of a man with blades for fists this is the story of a man with blades for fist. Ed goes, goes on a show. If he has a lady, it's what the girls want to know. Cops come, bright lights. The town gets mad, so he runs for his life. Kim gets old, the story gets told Ed is the reason for this guy to make some snow Oh, what a twist, a tale with no bliss This is the story of a man with blades for fists This is the story of a man with blades for fists This is the story of a man with blades for fists He's got blades for fist. Little Eddie blades for fist. Little Eddie blades for fist. Little Eddie blades for fist. I like the part where you sang about him having blades for fist. Edward Scissorhands is, in a word, magical. And Tim Burton's, like, eccentric taste created a world that has kind of fucking stood the test of time. As a reference for just how different this movie was, you want to listen to some of the movies that came out in theaters around the same time that fucking Edward Scissorhands did? We had movies like Look Who's Talking, The Rookie, Mermaids, Godfather 3. No one was doing this play on German expressionism at the time. And what was so dope about this movie compared to the other ones is that this was able to create an entire world that was really appealing to audiences. And for me, when it comes to film, escapism is number one. Tim Burton was able to create a world that I was easily able to escape too. I think that's what a lot of people gravitate towards this movie for. He understands that need in people so well. So that's how I could get people to like me. Well, no, no, no. Can I just point out the fact that the mom's name is Peg Box, which, dude, come on, that, that sounds just like Peg Box. Come on, you guys, you guys know pegging. This fucking, this guy knows pegging. This film is so touching and warm. Even though we're following ultimately what can amount to a monster, Johnny Depp does such a good job fucking creating this character that we don't even see the monster. He just, he reads like a fucking puppy. And for whatever reason, you just, you fucking like this ugly son of a bitch. I don't know. I would let him fuck me. Just let him root around in my cookie jar. And there's quite a bit of symbolism in this film as well. And I think we see a lot of that through Vincent Price's inventor character. You see his fucking life. Clearly, he is like a genius. Like, he is so smart. He could probably do like evil villain type crimes, but he doesn't. He uses his brain and his capabilities in order to make 
cookies. God, speaking of, like, what was with that fucking cookie machine? I think that says a lot about his character. And it totally points to what he would end up ultimately doing by picking up that cookie heart and putting it to something. He already knew how to make sweet things, but what could he make that would be even sweeter? That being Edward himself, that puppy-ass motherfucker. And the character of Edward, he just has, like, a litany of emotional issues. So much so that he's even afraid to put his hands on a woman who's throwing himself at him. Which, how could he not harbor that fear when the last time that he touched somebody, it was Vincent Price and there was fucking blood and shit. Psychologically, he's too afraid to touch Kim. So when we actually see those two embrace, it's this gigantic, big, beautiful moment that was on, like, that's the climax to a bunch of small, beautiful moments. That was soft. That was like a fucking, that was like a really soft way to talk about that. Let's take a look at another emotional connection with this that figure sketch. The Oscar winners give a press conference and how to buy a sailboat Gloria, as time moves. Like shit. I'm out of here. What happened? What's wrong? Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, <laughs> fuck, Gloria. That's everything. Say goodbye to everything. I know, I know. Fuck, fuck, fuck. What did they did they get did they get the glasses? You think uh, they got the glasses? I don't know. We don't have any prostitutes undercover, you know. We all we put everybody in positions of influence, and oh so my days of going to hookers are over. Well, you you wanted to be a news anchor. I knew we should have been fucking cops. Now we don't have any, we don't even have guns. Well, we're fired. We we're not even news anchors now. No, I know. What do we Fuck. do? What do we do? We could we online. Maybe you and me do a little podcast. I. They're gonna think we're zombies. No, man. no. Okay, what we do. Okay, we, we shouldn't tell anybody about this. It should just be a me and you thing. So we start a podcast um, talking about the situation. And we just go into hiding, baby. We could just go into hiding. Oh, maybe they'll... You think they'll believe that we're here for peace? <sighs> we come in peace. Well, we can't do nothing. Do we come in peace? No, not at all. I didn't think that we... No, we're no, awful. I didn't. Yeah, really, we just suck them dry is what we did. Oh, man. I don't know. Well, whoever fucking figured this out must have been a guy of high standing. I bet this goes all the way to the top. You think? Definitely. You think the fucking president? No, I, I think a fucking homeless guy did it. What do you think? I don't know. I thought I thought the president was one of ours. If I'm being completely honest. He is. Right? He's one of us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've gotten a lot of people. Like, we really... Okay, like, I, it's a terrible situation, but I gotta tell you, I don't think that we should be that upset. We did a lot here, and I think we should be proud of ourselves. I'm yeah. not a tech guy, but maybe we can yeah. get a new satellite thing here. That's why I'm saying we did a podcast. All right. All right, podcast, me and you. Definitely. Let's think of a name. Um, they're live. <laughs> uh, that's good. That's yeah, good. Yeah. That's, that's us. We're live. We are live. They're live. We're not undead. They're please li- don't. No, no. Please don't shoot us. No, we're good. We're good. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Fuck. <laughs> My marriage is over. Your marriage? She's human. You never told me you were married. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know, That Figures is actually its own channel with me and my best friend Brad, and we just play with horror figures and, you know, act like adults who play with toys. Everything is improv and it's all comedy, and we spend a lot of time playing with these things for you guys. If you're a horror fan and you get all the inside jokes and stuff, you're gonna fucking love That Figures. So there's a link to that in the description of this, or just type in That Figures and go follow us. In addition to that news, there's also brand new t-shirts, which will also be a link down below. Look at me, I'm just getting right back, getting right back into this thing. And of course, if you choose to support the channel, I have a Patreon where you can come and support me and help me be more creative and do even crazier things on the channel. We're definitely going in an insane direction and there's a whole lot more coming. So make sure that you like this video and hit the notification bell because that stuff genuinely does help. Like I fucking, I learned a lot about this stuff and that, that helped. I will see you guys on the next video. Peace video creeps.